Hi, I'm Matt Harbour, Director of Clinical Exercise Physiology at Ball State University, and I will be discussing our new paper entitled Influence and Change in Cardiostatutory Fitness with Short-Term Exercise Training on Mortality Risk from the Ball State Adult Fitness Longitudinal Lifestyle Study. This paper will appear in Mayo Clinic Proceedings in August 2019. This study is from our Ball State cohort, which is a longitudinal study established in 1970 to examine the influence of exercise and cardiorespiratory fitness or fitness on health outcomes in apparently healthy men and women. Some background information. The importance of fitness as a strong independent predictor of mortality has been well established in multiple cohorts. One aspect of our cohort that is unique is that we directly measure fitness using maximal exercise tests combined with pulmonary gas exchange analysis, which provides a direct, precise measure of fitness, which reduces variability when attempting to predict long-term health outcomes. As we know that fitness is inversely related to mortality, our data show that improving fitness with four to six months of exercise training reduces risk of mortality over 30 years of follow-up. For this study, we examined almost 700 individuals, both men and women, that were middle-aged. All individuals performed a baseline health fitness assessment and then performed four to six months of exercise training and were reassessed and then followed for almost 30 years uh, after the second exercise test. On average, we observed a 1.5 met or metabolic equivalent increase in fitness, which corresponded to about 9% of their baseline fitness. This improvement in fitness is typical of exercise programs lasting about six months. Now the increase, uh, or our findings indicated that every one met improvement in fitness corresponded with a 25% reduction in risk of mortality. And this finding was consistent for both men and women and persisted after adjusting for traditional risk factors, such as hypertension, cholesterol, obesity, diabetes, and others. Another finding was that individuals that were categorized as low fit at baseline and remained low fit after training had a two-fold higher risk of mortality than individuals that were identified as high fit at either testing point. But importantly, Individuals that were low fit at baseline but improved out of the low fit group after the exercise training had a similar reduction in mortality risk as those individuals that were high fit at either time point. So the bottom line is our data show the improvement in fitness with exercise training lowers mortality risk over 30 years of follow-up. So how is this information clinically useful? Well, as the American Heart Association has recently advocated that fitness be a clinical vital sign that is routinely assessed in patients, our data show that all patients, but particularly those that are identified as low fit, should be referred for exercise training with a goal of improving fitness, which should be monitored routinely uh, in an effort to assess the therapeutic efficacy of the exercise training similar to how a patient will be monitored if they were prescribed medication for hypertension or high cholesterol. So next steps in our research uh, are that we examine mortality as an endpoint uh, and show that improving fitness is associated with reductions in mortality. Future research should examine the impact of improving fitness on developing chronic disease, such as cardiovascular disease, cancer, diabetes, uh, and many others. Finally, as these data are the strongest evidence to date that exercise is indeed medicine. Hopefully we can pursue models whereby clinicians refer patients for exercise training with exercise professionals with a goal of improving fitness in hopes of improving long-term health outcomes. Thank you. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, 
such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.